Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercies endure it forever. You're welcome to Daybreak on Salvation TV. And of course, it's a show that's put together to bring you hope beyond the scope of all the crazy happenings, peace beyond the chaos, and above all, bringing you joy in the morning through the source of God's word. Beyond God knows is my name and you're welcome to Daybreak on Salvation TV. And of course, it's indeed the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it for the joy of the lord is our strength if there's anything we ought to be grateful to god for despite the fact that we are still trying to push and achieve all that we've planned to achieve we should be grateful to god for life oh yes you ought to be grateful to god for life you may have lots of prayer requests lots of expectations they may not have come to pass but the fact that god wakes you up every morning is an indication that god is not done with you yet and of course the expectation of the righteous shall not be court shorts. It's a beautiful day today and yes we have an awesome amazing topic today to actually talk about to help you understand life much better and uh, to expand your scope and see how you can actually add value to yourself and to your life and to your environment at large. So don't forget to stay tuned, stay with us. We're going to go on a short timeout and when we come back we will have Kelichi Clifford with Words Making News. Sorry about that fate in the news. <laughs> Just stay tuned. Your one-stop point for edifying Christian content from religious programs, educative talk shows, entertaining music shows, sports and comedy. Salvation Television has got you covered. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your sins will extol you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all men may know of your mighty acts. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You must remain in the tabernacle of praise. Learn what it takes to offer acceptable praise in the praise series with David Ibiomi. Winning with Praise Part 1 to 6 Praise for Enjoying His Grace Part 1 to 5 The Miracle of Power of Praise Part 1 to 5 Praise Dimension for the Supernatural Part 1 to 5 And so much more To get the MP3 and DVDs Make a purchase via www.smhos.org Slash store You can also call Plus two three four seven zero three eight nine four five seven one four. Plus two three four eight zero nine five two one six four six six. There's a move that birds the supernatural. The clock is ticking. A shift is happening. Men are no longer relying on natural laws. We have stepped into Supernatural, presenting the Supernatural series by David Ibiomie. Living in the Supernatural. Your degree of operation in the Supernatural is dependent on the degree of knowledge you acquire. Attitude for Supernatural Supplies Supernatural supply is determined by your attitude towards kingdom ethics. Supernatural abundance. Prosperity does not respond to prayer and fasting, but to covenant practices. Unveiling the power of John 3.16. Love is in the bedrock of living. By love you gain dominion. You enjoy unlimited supply of success and delivery of God's best. Learn what it takes to exercise your authority in Christ. Those forces, they are real, but more real is the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost that broke gates of brass asunder. In the name of Jesus, we destroy every devil tormenting your life. Get these books at the Knowledge Center of Salvation Ministries and in leading bookstores worldwide. You can call plus 234-703-894-5714. Plus 234-809-521-6466 or visit 
www.smhos.org/store. The power of the Holy Ghost is above every force of darkness. Your one-stop point for edifying Christian content from religious programs, educative talk shows, entertaining music shows, sports, and comedy. Salvation Television has got you covered. Hello and welcome to What's Making News and Faith in the News as well. Salvation Ministries Elaborate Satellite Church held a spontaneous night of worship program on Monday this week, hosted by Pastor Justice Nengi and featured in-house ministers like Winifred, Jennifer B.A., Sonia Owen, Samson, Indy Freka, David, etc. The program was organized strictly to worship God and experience His presence. His Love Foundation, the charity arm of Redeemed Christian Church of God, has renewed its commitment to impacting Nigeria, even as the church has spent about 18.4 billion naira on various charity programs across the country in the last three years. Marking its third anniversary and the 69th annual convention of ROCCG, His Love Foundation has also concluded plans to donate a full-fledged dialysis center to be named Enoch and Folu Adeboye. Dialysis Center to the Olabisi Onabanjo University Teaching Hospital, Ogun State. And turning a show floor into a sanctuary, a private lap dance room into a youth ministry space, and also trading a dance pool for a pulpit are just a few of many changes that took place as a former strip club in Anchorage, Alaska has been converted into a Baptist church. Once home to the heavily frequented fantasies on Fifth Strip Club, the building was bought by Linda again, the daughter of a former exotic dancer and was transformed into the new home of Open Door Baptist Church and is now headed by Reverend Kenny Menendez. And finally, the Constitutional Court of Chile has ruled in favor of the right of parents to also choose the kind of education their children receive, preventing the government from imposing a secular worldview to sex education and other topics. The court has also affirmed the specific protections of the right of parents to have their children educated in accordance with their morals, philosophical and religious convictions under the International Covenant on Human Rights, the American Conventions on Human Rights and the First Addictional protocol to the European Conventions on Human Rights. And that's Faith in the News. I'm Kalechi Clifford. You are a product of how you think. And to think right, you need the right information. The Word of Life Bible Institute will be is a two-week intensive program known to teach men and women to think in line with God's Word. And now you can be a part of the ever-growing community of Kingdom Giants by registering for our online courses from anywhere in the world. To register, please follow these steps. Step 1. Visit www.smhos.org forward slash online and click on the register button located at the middle of the page. Step 2. Click on Basic Certificate Course. Step 3. Click on View Cat and proceed to checkout. Step 4. Fill in your details and choose a payment option. Step 5. Confirm payment. Step 6. Start learning. Easy, right? For more information, please visit www.smhos.org forward slash Wolby. You're welcome back to Daybreak on Salvation TV. And that was Kelly Clifford with Faith in the News. And of course, he's still here with me. But before we proceed uh, with the headlines from Faith in the News, uh, we have a wisdom quote from Pastor David Ibiomi, and it says, every crisis is a wisdom crisis. In other words, to actually solve any crisis, you actually need wisdom. So the scripture will tell you that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all your gettings, make sure you apply the wisdom. So it says in all your gettings, get understanding. And so, of course, I have Kelly Clifford. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Kalechi, uh, you, you, you read uh, the news this morning, Okay. You, basically fates in the news, and um, you talked about some headlines that were on the news, and there's a very catchy one in there about a clubhouse that mm. was bought over and transformed to a church. Like, can you just give up? <laughs> 
Okay, um, first of all, it's really, really interesting that the kingdom of God is advancing. I mean, we've seen it several times here as well, Salvation Ministry, you know, we close down clubhouse and turn it into satellite churches. You know, it just tells you that the kingdom of God is advancing and that has all happened as well in uh, Alaska. In Alaska. You know, yeah, so, you know, a strip clubhouse, people where, where they go, you know, to club, to lap bands and, you know, several fun stuff that yeah. they think they do. You know, it was demolished and, you know, bought by someone and then it was transformed into a Baptist church. I mean, it's really, really good news that people, you know, are closing down things that, you know, don't benefit. Edify, you know, edify the, spirit. the spirit. And, you know, Christ is advancing and it's really, really a good step that I saw there. And I had to put it on the news for <laughs> everyone to see. <laughs> yes, yes, because uh, I think... It's, it's what the scripture actually uh, told us, mm. okay, that um, the, the glory of the knowledge of God, yeah. the, the earth will be filled with mm. the glory of the knowledge of God, just yeah. as the words has covered the sea, mm. which simply means that uh, it will spread. Yeah, Definitely. And there is no stopping to the spread of the gospel. Absolutely. So Jesus admonishing Peter will tell Peter, I will mm. build my church mm -hmm. and the gates of hell shall not, not prevail, prevail yeah. against it. So yes, there's going to be some uh, resistance. There's going to be mm -hmm. some push against, uh, against the body of Christ yeah. from the kingdom of darkness. But I, I think the promise of God or the promise uh, Jesus made to his disciples when yeah. he made that statement was uh, even if they tend to push, mm -hmm. they will not be able to prevail or prevent the gospel from from yeah, being abso spread. Abso absolutely. So even the clubhouses are being bought and mm. uh, fellowship is being held in mm. the clubhouses. And that's, that's so awesome. Yeah, I mean, in summary, the Bible says, through prosperity, my kingdom shall spread. Yeah, it, it takes the church, you know, prospering and for them to be able to, you know, demolish buy or off, buy off all these places. All so when, when there is prosperity, you know, it helps the church to advance. To advance. And, and that is really what's happening, especially in this last time. So prosperity is really key for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And that's news like this would really, really encourage the church that, look, the, the gospel is spreading. That's why the challenges we're facing, but the gospel will spread at the end of the day. Yeah, I know I've, I've also heard some people criticize the, mm. the message of prosperity mm. and um, they tend to make it look like uh, when you preach prosperity, you're not preaching the gospel. Mm. And I begin to ask if prosperity is not the gospel, <laughs> so what <laughs> is the gospel? Is it going to be poverty? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, because I know yeah. uh, when Jesus came, went into the temple, the first time he picked mm. up the scroll, uh, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. The first thing the, 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 the mission of Jesus did was to address poverty. Mm. So, which simply means pros uh, prosperity is God's agenda, is Surely. God's plan. Surely. So, if the scripture even says, through prosperity shall the gospel be spread out yeah. God, it simply means prosperity is God's will for Absolutely. his people. Yeah. And John as well said so. Yeah, yeah. so imagine, imagine if uh, they didn't have the kind of money that they had to actually buy up a clubhouse. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have uh, been transformed mm -hmm. to the place too. where they are preaching the gospel. Yeah, and and it's it's old news now. It's it's totally past now. That place is no longer a clubhouse, and now it's been used to promote the gospel. To and, promote and, the gospel. And it's really good news. Yeah, God be praised, <laughs> and we we do hope and we do believe that acts like this will actually spread, uh, mm. not just in one place. It's going to be everywhere, and Surely. of course the gates of hell will not be not able to prevail, prevail against the church of God. <laughs> All right, we're going to go on a short break. And when we come back, we'll be dealing with a very important subject matter, staying safe. Yes, we live in critical times and it's important to stay safe. Do you stay tuned. When we come back, we will be discussing that topic this morning. <laughs> The best business is your father's business. It is time to step into the father's payroll and encounter a life that never lacks. Life is not about just having material possession, but about the kingdom of God first. Tell somebody about the love of Jesus Christ. Stop chasing after things. Chase after God and Jesus will be glorified. God said the world put together cannot equate one soul. A soul is more precious. There is joy in heaven over his soul than the entire wealth of the world. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. 
Engage in the project Matthew 6.33 today. The greatest love is to see men saved. That's God's heartbeat. Your one-stop point for edifying Christian content from religious programs, educative talk shows, entertaining music shows, sports and comedy. Salvation Television has got you covered. Welcome back to Daybreak on Salvation TV. And yes, we're dealing with staying safe, the challenges of insecurity. So uh, you will understand that insecurity and terrorism have been a major challenge to the society in recent times. Uh, this has led to loss of lives, properties in the country. Some of these activities include bombing, suicide bombing attacks, uh, sporadic shooting, of unarmed and innocent citizens, burning of police stations, churches, kidnapping of schoolgirls and women, kidnapping, rape, armed robbery, political crisis, mother, destruction of oil facilities, and all of that. Uh, in the early 20th century, sociologists typically associated social problems such as unemployment, crime, poverty with defense individuals. As a result, when they sought to solve social problems, they focused on changing individual behavior through this approach is still alive today. So sociologists had by, by and large arrived at a different understanding. By the mid-century, sociologists turned away from an emphasis on individuals to a consideration of the social structures of nations, organizations, and institutions such as corporation, government, and the media for an understanding of the possible factors influencing social inequalities. So uh, our guest today is Mr. Ayuba Tanimu. Uh, he's a, he's a, he, he has a BSc in sociology. He's a retired SSS. Uh, who, he's also a DSS officer, a former presidential bodyguard, a security consultant with specialty in technical security. Uh, he's a pastor. He's a husband of one wife and a father of three children. So you're welcome to the show. Thank Mr. you. you are. Thank you very much. And good morning, viewers. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank uh, you. We're dealing with handling insecurity, uh, staying safe, the challenges of insecurity in modern times. So uh, can you just briefly tell us, uh, when we talk about insecurity in the society, in the environment, what exactly are we really looking at? Uh, insecurity in the environment basically is anything that threatens lives and property. Any action, any situation, any circumstance that constitutes a threat to lives and property is something of a concern. It's, in fact, it's not to be uh, a case of an insecurity because um, every effort being put in place to make sure people are secured is all geared towards making sure that people are safeguarded and properties are also safeguarded. So anything that constitutes a problem to the safety or to the security of life and property is not to be an issue of insecurity. Okay. Uh now, we, we live in a time where insecurity is a general language, okay? Uh, it's not just peculiar to a particular region. It's not just peculiar to a particular country. Uh, the issue of insecurity spans all over the world, okay? Even the most, uh, the safest of places, okay? Uh, you, you cannot say it's totally safe or 100% safe. We've had uh, instances where uh, you have drive-by shootings even in the most secured countries in the world. For instance, in the United States, okay? Uh, you have situations where kids get guns, go into school, go into their classes and shoot sporadically, killing people and all of that. So insecurity is not just a, a question of a particular state or a country or a region. So uh, when we say uh, insecurity, what are the dangers of insecurity in a particular environment? Just as you said, every environment is being faced with a special kind of insecurity. They are not particularly the same in all areas. And when you're talking about dangers of insecurity, it affects our lives across different strata. Individually, we are being affected. Lives and properties are being affected. As a nation, our development is being affected. Even our, the economy is being affected. Let me say, for example, 
as an individual, beside the fiscal measures being put in place to make sure there is security, one needs to feel secure. The feeling of insecurity itself is one of the major things that is driving people insane. In fact, it is one thing I consider major. For example, how many people are really feeling safe, even in the absence of a, of, of a fiscal threat? Take for example, if your relation is traveling, in the case of Nigeria, for example, most of us cannot afford to fly. Hmm. We travel by road. How many of us can have or can maintain sanity when your relation is on the road? Before he or she arrives to his or her de destination, you will, be, you will be under tension. You will be thinking, if at any time you attempt to make a call, the call does not connect, you will be ah, you're wondering yes. what is it that might have happened. But you will only feel relaxed after you find out that the person has arrived, arrived. at his own destination. You are going to sleep in the night, you are wondering what might happen. This is just like you, are you, are, you, are, you give an example of uh, driving by and shooting. You are going out in the morning, you are praying to come back home safe because you don't know what is it. So that feeling of insecurity itself has destabilized so many people. I was watching a video recently online. Um, there was this very woman who was into, into the production of coconut oil. So because of the constant rising of the cost of production, cost of material, she was now thinking of going back to her village to start a, a cocoa plantation. Okay. But she made a statement. Moving from where she is today to the, to the village is a challenge to her because of insecurity. So she cannot grow her business in that kind of environment. Are we talking about national development? How can we have development in a state of insecurity? I come from the Northeast, for example, and the government has established the Northeast uh, Development Commission development or something Commission, like that. Yes. Now look at what the governor of Baruna State is doing, for example. He is trying his best to make sure the refugees in the camp return back to their ancestral homes. And before they do that, they go to some of these very villages, ensure the, the destruction that have been meted on them, some of them are being repaired, houses have been yes. built for them. But after a while, these Boko Haram people come back and destroy these things, pulling the uh, development backward. Foreign direct investment is not possible in Nigeria. In the last few years, instead of having the foreign, the foreign direct investment, we see people pulling out their money from the Nigerian economy in billions of dollars. This affects our national economy. Now, I read an analysis yesterday, we are even in a negative uh, figure now as far as foreign direct investment is concerned. Who will come to invest in a nation that, he cannot, that cannot guarantee the security of his own investment? Oh, okay, okay. Now, now while, while, while we're looking at all of these things, yes, it's, uh, it's, it's no news mm. that uh, the whole place is shaken. It's no news that um, there's so much insecurity. Can we, can we look at the causes of insecurity? Why do we have, you, you've worked with the, with the presidency mm. before, you've been uh, the, a presidential bodyguard, you've worked with the DSS, okay? I know uh, within my stay at the federal capital, I driving by the, the DSS, <laughs> the DSS office. As a, I can, as a I can, drive. <laughs> yes, as a, like when you're heading out to the National yes, Assembly. Yes, uh, and, and you see so much uh, security, uh, 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 Personnel on ground. In fact, while driving along that place, you need to be extra careful. Uh, careful. It's true. <laughs> yes. So uh, we cannot have all of this on ground and still be complaining of insecurity. So what really is the root cause of insecurity in a nation such as this? Top on the chart is unemployment. See, the active demography of our population are the youth and the majority of our youth are unemployed. Now, I watched a video recently where um, I saw President Biden of the United States said, given the, uh, a report of reduction of unemployment in the month of May, and the video was just opposed with that of President Buhari. While another president is celebrating reduction of unemployment. unemployment. Another president is telling Nigerian youth that there is no chance for employment in the federal civil service. <laughs> telling youth that 
even if you finish your degree, you cannot be guaranteed an employment. And the active demography of our population are the youth. What do you expect? Everybody wants to make it in life, and what do you expect? So something deliberately must be done to be able to positively, actively engage our youth, if not. Now, look at the people who are carrying guns all around. Are they old men? No. They are our youth who are easily enticed into some, some of this very criminality. And of course, people will need to make ends meet. Of course. People need, to, people need to eat and survive. Survive. So what do you expect? Now, as if that is not enough corruption in the government, well, that one is a non-fact. No, no Nigerian will, will claim to be ignorant of this very particular fact of commission, corruption in the government that contributes to insecurity. In a way, money will be budgeted for a project and somebody somewhere sits down on top of it. And things that are supposed to reach down to the populace do not reach because somebody somewhere has cornered the contract or has done away with what is expected to be done. That one is another thing altogether. We are talking about a situation where even the security agencies are not helping matter. We just survived an uproar in the country last year, 2020, the protests about answers, which almost crippled this very nation. So the security agencies themselves are not helping matters. Now, if God had not intervened in that very situation, you and I would not be sitting down here. In fact, imagine the, 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 the state at which it was going, if it had not been curtailed. Two weeks more, I'm, I don't think Nigeria would have survived that very situation. We also have another threat facing us, weak judiciary. I was listening to a video where um, an armed bandit that was arrested was being interviewed by a police officer. And it came to a point where the police officer was asking, what do you do if some people like you have been arrested? You know what that guy said? He said, their boss, who is a big man somewhere, has a lawyer that always goes to the police or goes to the court and bail them out any time they are being arrested. Now, so many times we see on TV, Boko Haram have been arrested, bandits have been arrested, and that is just the end. There is no feedback yeah, follow as follow, follow through. There is no feedback as to what has become of them. We don't see these people being punished. We don't see them pay for, the, for their crimes and criminality. So it will encourage others to keep going on. So our judiciary needs to be strengthened in this very particular case. High influx of arms and ammunition. I came across a statistic recently that really blew my mind. Currently in Nigeria, Arms and ammunition in circulation in Nigeria is put at 6 point, about 6.5 million. Now guess what? Only about 500,000 are legal arms in the hand of the security agencies in Nigeria. That means about 6 million arms and ammunition are in the hands of illegal people. So where are we heading to? So this will encourage arms. Now, Remember, any time a gang of armed robbers is being arrested, you will see the type of weapons that are being displayed. Where are they coming from? So something has to be done to curtail the influx of this, um, this thing. We are also being faced with this threat of drug abuse. Nigeria is said to be a hub, like a rallying point, where drugs is being traded, being, being traded to other part of the world. Two instances, a lady from Ghana was arrested in Nigeria. A lady from Chad was arrested in Nigeria. So people use Nigeria as, a, as an opening to go. Now, beside the fact that drug abuse is rampant, criminals engage themselves in drugs to give them the impetus, the courage, to actually go out, to go out, for, actually operations. Go out for operations. I always see videos of army raids, especially in the camp of Boko Haram. Every time you watch these very videos, there is something that is consistent. You see packs of 
hard drugs, no. substances that have been left behind. So what do you think? So what is the government doing to make sure these things have been curtailed? So there are several reasons that, that we can say to be behind insecurity in this country. Yeah, you've uh, outlined some uh, reasons uh, behind insecurity. Yes, I know uh, majorly uh, those reasons are, are, are things that could be curt curtailed by the government mm -hmm. and uh, pushed down from the federal level all the way down to the state and then down to the local. Uh, but apart from the government aspect or the government angle of mm -hmm. dealing with all of these things, is there another way uh, most of these things can be actually tackled to actually minimize the, 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 ho the whole issue of insecurity we have in this country? Yes, in Nigeria we are being faced with a multidimensional threat against security. It is not the same in every part of the country, so it will require one solution yeah, for one cap all, fits one, one cap fits thing, all kind yeah. of a solution. Now, for example, in the Northeast, we are faced with the threat of Boko Haram and their offshoot, ISWAP. In the North Central, we are faced with the threat of organized criminal gang in the name of bandits. What did they do? Kidnapping, kidnapping school children in, in mass for ransom. In the middle bit of the country, we are faced, even to the northwest, we are faced because it is one of the most fertile belt of this country of farming and, yeah, and, gra and grazing. Yes. yes. Now between Benue Middle Belt and this, we are being faced with the threat of farmers and uh, farmers and herders clashes. Okay, in the southeast, IPOP militias is another threat. Where they go about attacking government institutions. Just yesterday, I saw a report where a police station was attacked in somewhere in the east. The DPO was killed and the Amora was killed. And the DPO was killed, the police station set ablaze and the, uh, the um, DPO set ablaze. I saw his shared body. How long will that wow. continue? So you cannot say, okay, let's have one solution. So even the security agencies are not even safe? They, they themselves are not safe. And let me tell you the danger in this. And this is, if this continues, it will decimate to a situation where security agencies withdraw their services from the public. Now tell me what will become the result. Anarchy. Break, total breakdown of law and order. We we'll begin to see warlords springing up in every society. Those, who, those organized criminal gangs that are present now, who do not have the opportunity to manifest fully because of these security agencies, will now come out fully and take over territories. And it will become a fight of a, a battle of supremacy between them. Now, you and I that do, do not even purchase, purchase uh, uh, a uh, happy weapon, even a match you don't even have. What do you, you have to surrender to their government and whatever they ask you to do, you must do for the sake of your survival. We will become slaves. So imagine an illiterate who doesn't know his left and right because he has access to, to possess arms and nomination and he's a leader of a particular armed gang taking over a territory and become, becoming a warlord, forming his own government. So this is what it, it is going, these security agencies, they are human beings like us. They too want to live for the, for the sake of their lives and for the sake of their families. But they are being targeted. It's, it's something we all should rise up against. We shouldn't encourage and allow this to continue. So, I think, uh, uh, personally, I, I think it's, it's, it's a strategic plan. Of course, if, if you're going to take over a particular territory, uh, you need to first uh, take down the security agency. Of course. So you will not have a, a contentious yes. resistance yes. when you want to take over the place. Exactly. So I think most of the, uh, most of the crimes mm. carried out yeah. are strategically planned yes. to achieve a particular goal. Of course. That is so. We shouldn't encourage it. Everybody in the position of power should rise up against this very trend. It portends a dangerous situation for us if it is not curtailed. Now, we need a multidimensional measure against this very issue. Another problem also is lack of trust between the populace and the security agencies. It is something. Normally, it is the constitutional right of every citizen of this very country.
to contribute information to the security agencies to help them fight crimes. Now, I've seen situations where people go out to share information with security agents and they became, and they yes, they become victims. They become victims. I have so many stories that I don't have time to share here. But well, don't you think uh, issues like that uh, ought to be addressed? F first, the orientation of the security agencies, the, the, the orientation of the security personnel is also very important because sometimes uh, you realize that most of these people, you go through the academy, you go through the training, don't they orient them on how to deal with uh, citizens based on issues like that? Because it's not once, it's not twice where people go to report issues and they're also being arrested. So you now begin to ask, where, where is the place of orientation of the security agencies towards issues like this? Well, there are some things that I cannot sit here and begin to, <laughs> to, okay, I can understand. to, to talk about. I can understand. The, okay, the question you ask, have you ever taken a visit to the training schools of these agencies? Okay, let me even point out a popular point that since it is already in the public domain. Remember during the regime of Jonathan, he visited a, training, a police training college in, in Lagos. It was a public issue. What did he find out? Dilapidated facilities. This thing, how this, 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 this so-called policemen who are supposed to be oriented properly to guard the society. They go through harrowing experiences in the course of their training. And what do you expect should be the product at the other end? Okay, now, uh, 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 before we push forward with this, uh, you know what, let's take a short break. When we come back, we will expand shades more on this and see better ways of tackling insecurity in our environment. Do stay Thank tuned. You. Your one-stop point for edifying Christian content from religious programs, educative talk shows, entertaining music shows, sports and comedy. Salvation Television has got you covered. The working knowledge of the person of the Holy Spirit in the life of believers will make them succeed without sweat in every life's endeavor. Life cannot be secured without his help. You cannot succeed all alone. You need the Holy Spirit to empower you to succeed. Success in life is not a function of struggles or hard work, but a divine leading and direction by the Holy Spirit. Empowerment is supernatural backing. Something that is beyond you that comes from the supernatural to make you succeed. So the Holy Spirit gives us all it takes for us to succeed. This is an insightful teaching on Holy Spirit for Empowerment. How the Holy Spirit can empower you to succeed without sweat. Maximizing the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Knowing the gifts of the Holy Spirit and working with them will put you in command over life's challenges. Holy Spirit, my helper. Failure, stagnation and frustration will set in without the help of the Holy Spirit. The healing ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Life. He heals and restores our health. Holy Spirit, a mention of the name of Jesus. The knowledge of the power in the name of Jesus will put every believer in charge over Satan and his agents and cause you to live a victorious Christian life. To get this series of messages in totality on DVD or MP3, call now on the numbers displayed on your screen or visit www.smhos.org You're welcome back from that break. And of course, we are dealing with staying safe, the challenges of insecurity in our environment. And yes, we have Mr. Ayuba in the house, uh, who, who is a former DSS operative and a former presidential bodyguard. Yeah, you're welcome back to the show, sir. Thank you. So uh, we're actually dealing with uh, the orientation of security agents uh, before we actually went on the break as uh, one of it being uh, part of the reason there's a distrust between the citizens and the security agents. And you were talking about the orientation of the police officers. Can you just throw more light on, 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 on all of that while we proceed? 
Yeah, you know, anytime I'm talking about the police, I used to have some reservation. I used to tell people everywhere because I happened to be, my father was a police officer. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, but I noticed something. He actually came from the army after the war. Those who migrate from the army to the police. Those, we call them the old brigades. There is a little bit of sanity and sincerity in those days than what we are having today. Now, this very desire of our youth to make it at all cost. People now join police for several reasons. Unemployment could be one, not because they are passionate about the profession. Only few officers are actually joining because they want to be policemen to help. That is the truth, we can't shy away from that. Now, I trained my younger brother to, who happened to go through the police college. Through him, I got to understand so many things. He is in the police college, he will be calling me, they gave you a plate of swallow, but you will have to go and buy soup <laughs> to eat. You have to pay for everything you need as a trainee, including your mattress, the bucket you need to is that, wash. Is that, is that, is that proper? It, that's what I'm telling you, it's not proper. Now, after somebody has gone through that orientation, what product do you expect from the other end? This is a reality, we cannot shy away from it. So what do you expect? And such products come back to now protect the societies. Let me tell you something that happened within the Potako, this, uh, you know, DPOs and their men send people to mount roadblocks on the road. By the time they return to the base, Oga asks them about return. They say, Oga, oh there is nothing, oh, there is nothing, there is nothing, there is nothing. Then the area commanders made and now decided that, okay, before anybody will go to a checkpoint assignment, the person should deposit 10,000 Naira before he goes. Now they are now rushing to deposit the 10,000 Naira. So what do you think is out there on the road that people would rush to deposit 10,000 Naira for them to go to the road? I made a research when there was this very issue of increasing police salary. I conducted a research because I was, I was, I was writing a thesis. So will increment of salary help police to become less corrupt? The answer I got was shocking. Many police will still prefer to be collecting the 20, 20, 50, 50 naira on the road than to, than to depend on the incremental yes, salary. Sorry. How much will it, is, go, is it going to be? How much is the salary of a police inspector, police sergeant? As we speak in this country, it's very, very okay, embarrassing. Okay. So, <laughs> what do we expect for people in that kind of environment? As I said, there are some things I cannot just say. On the air. Okay, so, so so these are major major issues. These are issues that um, if you want to start digging and digging and digging, it's it, it, it's a very long chain. Chain. It, it goes straight down to leadership. It goes straight down to administration. It goes straight down to a whole lot of things. Yes. Okay. So uh, let us come back to. Uh, a subject matter, actually staying safe. Uh, now, we've come to realize that there are several kinds of threats, there are several kinds of um, insecurity. And um, you pointed out uh, within the regions of the country, Nigeria as a, as, a, as, a, as a study, within the regions of the country, several kinds of insecurity. So can you uh, tell us what are the major kinds of security threats we have, uh, both within the country and generally? Terrorism, top of the chart, banditry, organized crime, cyber threat. You know, it will surprise you to see that many people are still falling victim of Ponzi scheme. Just this morning, I was reading a report where somebody committed a suicide. Others who fell victim of that very particular scheme, three out of them attempted suicide because they borrowed money to invest in the so-called investment day thing is, is good and everything became a sham. So cyber threat, banditry, organized crime, armed robbery, kidnapping for ransom is almost like a big business now in this country. Now, ritual killing is something people are not talking about. But innocent individuals are losing their lives on a daily basis. Now, 
Kidnapping is paying the kidnappers in two ways. If you are kidnapped and there is no money to ransom you, you will be killed and your parts being sold to ritualists. This is happening in our society. So these are diverse threats that we have been faced with. Human trafficking. I can't, can't resent it. Why would somebody have the mind to go and steal somebody's child for the sake of money and go and sell and remain and, and the conscious and at, at peace thinking you are making money? Selling of children is a threat. Children have been stolen from the north, shipped to the east, across border, being sold. Now, I don't know who is worse, the person who is doing the stealing or the or person that is buying. doing the buying. I don't know what mind do they possess. So these things are happening in our society. That's all. I was saying it is a multidimensional kind of a threat and we have to approach it likewise. So yesterday I was listening, I was reading a report where uh, the Speaker of the House, Bajamila, was lamenting that uh, the savage chiefs were not respecting him, uh, kind of something like that. They were, when the savage chiefs were summoned, the only same representative, so he saw it as a disrespect, as an, as an insult, <laughs> as a disrespect. Complaining, is it supposed to be like that? No. These people are supposed to be held accountable. You are being given position. People are not being held accountable. So what do you expect? Now, they have taken a step further and said setting up a 40-man committee to come out with a security architecture of this very country. We hope they will do justice to it because we need that. Our security architecture needs to be rejected. In order to develop crime, crime, for example, a police commissioner in this state is supposed to be an indigent of this state. Yeah, who understands the terrain. The terrain and understand the society. But what do we have in Nigeria? Some states, some people have been posted somewhere just because of what they will make, because of the connection they have. They are in some other positions. So how can we f successfully fight insecurity? Okay, uh, now uh, as Christians, as believers in the body of Christ, uh, yes, we, we are not ignorant of the fact that there's so much insecurity, there's so much challenges of... Uh, insecurity and people can't really uh, sleep with their two eyes closed or be at peace because I really even want to talk about this. It's a very elaborate topic. Mm. You now begin to wonder why people will have the mind to get into a public institution of learning and carry so many students at a, at a spot and move them out. And within the period of transit from where they pick them to where they're taking them to, there is no security is agency system. or no security agents to actually stop or intercept them and all of that. So uh, as Christians, how do we stay safe in an environment like this? Well, let me begin from the last point you raised. There is one problem we must not ignore in this country. The number of security agencies is too, too, too small to police this country. If I tell you, put together the strength of our armed forces and the strength of the police in Nigeria, it's ridiculous. We are almost like under one million. All this, 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 this all this to police and to secure over two hundred million people. It is too small. Now, just as you said, people will be carried away and travel for a very long distance. Why? Because there are vacuum being created. So many of the successes of the arm, uh, the armed forces in the Northeast were reversed. Why? Because after liberating a community, there are no people to be stationed back there to secure the community. These people come back and wreak havoc continuously. So, as Christians, I was teaching, I used to go to like, give lectures in a lot of places about basic security awareness, how people can ensure their own personal security, safety. safety and security. This awareness is very, very important. I used to say, as Christians, 
we, we need to look at security in a different light based on the promises we have in the scriptures. I was saying this in, the, in one of the class that a student helped me say, as, as Christian security is not more than Psalm 91 verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the shadow Almighty. Of and I agree with him because except the Lord watches over the city, the watchman keep it awake but in vain. So we must learn how to put our trust in God to first and foremost take care of the fear of inscriptical. Fear itself, the Bible says, is a, a terror. So when you live in fear, you lose your peace, you, you, are, you become susceptible to every attack and manipulation of the devil. So we must build our sense of security on the Lord, not on the government, not on our abilities. That, this is very, very important. I'm talking as Christians now. Because where else? The government is not up to its responsibility or whether it is too much or it is its inability when the defense minister of a country will come out publicly to tell the citizens of the country we should learn how to defend ourselves. Then what do you expect the citizens to do? So, so God is telling us we must, we must learn as Christians to put our trust in God. This is very, very important put our trust in God. Because I used to tell people, even if it comes to death, you should not be afraid as a child of God. You know where you are going to. Because all the thing bogs down to the fear, to fear of death. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> yes. It also bogs down to fear of death. Oh, all right. Thank you so much. I, I know uh, if we continue uh, yes. on this subject matter, we really will not be able to exhaust it even in another two hours, another three hours. Of course, so, of course. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. It's, Ayuba. It's my and pleasure. we'll just go straight to what God is saying to us mm -hmm. this morning. Mm -hmm. So uh, God's word this morning is saying to us in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 31. He says, the horse is prepared for battle. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, Mr. U.S. said, first and foremost, you need to understand that your safety is not in the hand of a man. Mm -hmm. You need to understand that your safety is not in the hand of the government. As long as you're a child of God, you're born again, you've received Jesus into your heart, you need to understand that you belong to the family of God and the responsibility of the Father of the family is the safety of his children. So understand that as you're a child of God and you're born again, your safety is God's priority. So you need to understand that your safety is of the Lord and not in the hand of any man. So when you understand that God is in charge of your safety, God is in charge of your life, God is in charge of everything that happens around you, then you will understand that beyond the fear, you need to build faith in your father who is able to protect you. That way you will be at peace even in the midst of all the chaos happening around you. So if you're watching with us, just connect your heart, this, you connect your heart with us this morning and let us just say a short word of prayer so we can be able to keep our faith together. So bow your heads, close your eyes and connect with us this morning. So let's say this prayer together. In Jesus' name, Amen. Lord, we thank you for making us understand that even if we are in the world, we are not of the world. Lord, your word made, made us understand that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We will say of the Lord, he's our refuge and our fortress. Thank you for making us understand that our safety is in your hand, that our safety is your priority, that you have decided to keep us safe because you are our Father. Lord, we pray for everyone watching us. Lord, we pray that their mind will be at peace wherever they are having issues and they are bothered. Everything around them is happening all against the, the, the environment. Everything is working against them and everybody is living in fear. Lord, we pray that despite the fear, you will help them to build faith in you. You will help them to build their trust in you, for we know that you will never fail us. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you, Father, for your promise of safety, for we know that you will keep us in our going out and in our coming in. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So thank you for watching with us this morning, and till we come your way again, don't forget to keep your faith alive and understand that safety is of the Lord. God bless you. Have a beautiful day ahead.